Welcome to the car guys and this week was supposed to be a drive every Ferrari episode about my Pista Spider but unfortunately in an effort to get the steering sorted on that car it's still in pieces so I haven't been able to finish it in time therefore I thought it would be the perfect time to do a garage update what cars need work where the hell are some of them what cars am I buying and am I selling any more of them and also look at Jason's cars as well. I also thought I'd give you an update on Drive Every Ferrari and let you know how that's going and give a couple of pleas for some new cars. So if that sounds like your special kind of Car Guys Garage update vodka, let's get on with it. So here we are then in the Car Guys Garage, lots going on as you can imagine. First thing to update you about, the humdrum stuff. So I've got a load of MOTs to organize, which I totally haven't yet. Namely, the 993 C4S over there is currently MOT-less, as is the Rolls-Royce Phantom, and also the 355 Spider. So I've got to get those booked in, and then I can decide whether to register them and allow them to be driven on the road, perhaps do some episodes for you fine people. My original Honda NSX. Well, some interesting news has happened on that this week. I've actually managed to join the Honda NSX Owners Club in the UK. Now, I met these guys at Bewley recently. I didn't even realize there was a Honda NSX Owners Club. I guess it makes sense if you think about it. And I joined them, signed up for two years with the aim of getting as much information from them as possible to help me understand where to get it serviced the best. Because of course, I've had a hell's job trying to find a good place to get this car serviced. And actually, I've already had a couple of really good tips as to where to take it. So hopefully, I'll be driving the Honda NSX over to get a full service in the next few weeks. I've not really serviced it for two years, thanks to COVID, but I'm hopefully gonna find a reputable and reliable person to service this car at last. And you know what that means, folks? I'm gonna drive it a lot more. The Lamborghini Gallardo Valentino Balboni. Now, many of you will know that I've been trying to sell that car. Um, it hasn't sold yet, so it's gone to Lamborghini Pangborn to have a full service, and it's now returning back to the garage. I may decide to keep trying to sell it. I might put it on collecting cars, for example, but at the moment it's coming back to the car guy's garage. So it'll be quite interesting to see whether when it returns, how I feel about it. And as the clash says, should it stay or should it go? A car that's missing from the car guy's garage at the moment is my Porsche 718 Spider. That has just been dropped off to Porsche to have the dynamic engine mounts replaced under warranty. They failed, if you remember, the same day as my GT3 Touring. But those are gonna get replaced, and then straight after that, I'm going on a road trip through Wales. So that promises to be a super cool road trip on some epic roads here in the UK. And I think I'll take you along for the ride. The life of the Car Guys garage is of course organic and never ending. So at the moment, I've got about 15 cars, and uh, that requires an awful lot of admin paperwork and journeys to suppliers, service centers, and all sorts of places. The Toyota GR Yaris, that's done over 6,000 miles now since last November, and I've just had that done for its major first service. It's supposed to have an inspection at three and then a service at six, I kind of missed the inspection uh, and just went straight for the big service. So that's now been done. They didn't find anything wrong with it at all, as you would expect, uh, but at least now it's been properly sorted. And particularly, they've gone through and made sure that as a brand new car, it's had its fluids changed. It's all ready for some proper rally action. Now, regular viewers will know that I've sold some cars this year, and I don't think I'm ready to finish just yet. There are some others that I'm considering on the chopping block at the moment, because what I wanna do is reduce down the number of cars and then try and make sure I've got as perfect a garage as possible, but crucially, all cars that I drive regularly and have different purposes. Yes, that's right, it could be for the chopping block, this 911 993C4S, I don't drive it a huge amount. What I need to do, first of all, is get it MOT'd, go for a drive, see how I feel about it. It is an achingly beautiful car, but if I'm being honest, I'm just having a bit of an issue with Porsche at the moment. I'm just sort of falling out of favor because it's not a company that in any way is 
attempting to woo me and I just don't know really whether I want to sort of continue having a group of Porsche in the garage from a company that um, treats its customers like that. So GT3 Touring sat just there. Obviously that's a lifetime car and I've got a really exciting video of that coming up for you soon uh, where Roger Bailey, other YouTuber and myself take that car and his 992 GT3 Touring out on the Welsh roads. So don't miss that one, it's gonna be amazing. At last, some non-Ferrari content on the channel, I hear you cry. But that one's not gonna go anywhere, but therefore I've only ever got two other Porsches, which is the 718 Spyder and the 993 C4S. So depends how much more I fall sort of out of favor or I fall out of love with Porsche um, and how they're treating me. Don't know, we'll see, the jury's out on that one. But if I've fallen out of love with Porsche, Maybe it has to go. And another one for the potential chopping block is this Lotus Elise Final Edition. I've had a lot of fun with it, I've done some decent miles and some really good road trips, but I'm just not sure if I'm fully gelling with it. So it's definite candidate for going from the car guy's garage. The Valentino Balboni we've already discussed, that may continue to be for sale and we might try and push that along. Shock upon shocks, could it be true? Could I be thinking of getting rid of the McLaren 675LT? Well, it is a possibility. I don't drive it that much and I've always said if I don't drive it that much, then maybe I should get rid of it. But I know that this is a very special car and it may only take a full drive of this car for me to realize what a stupid mistake I would be making. Drive every Ferrari, I thought I'd do a quick update on that. I'll probably do a full episode taking you through exactly what I've done so far, the other ones that are committed and how the overall challenge is going. We do have just over 90 cars to get through and I am pleased to report that I've secured 57% of them so far. So we're doing really well considering that we started it only in 2022 and obviously we had to start from scratch and get going. But thanks to your generosity, you, you people, I've already got 57% covered and I've already driven quite a few of them as you may have noticed on the channel. So I'm extremely pleased how well hashtag drive every Ferrari is going. I'm so grateful to you guys for helping me on this journey. It's just fantastic. What I thought I'd do now is before doing a full update video, I thought I'd just do a special plea for some of the more special cars, which I haven't yet secured. So if any of you out there have got these cars or know someone who might be friendly towards the car guys, then hopefully we can arrange it and we can add those cars to the list too. So some of the cars I've still yet to secure, the F50, the Enzo and the LaFerrari, so three big hitters, and also a 250 Lusso, which I'm quite excited to do because I almost bought one at auction. So you'll find out that full story in that episode. And on the subject of the Ferrari special cars, the F40. Now I thought I'd throw this out to you guys to see what you think. I have got the option obviously of securing someone else's F40 and doing a drive every Ferrari episode as I normally would, but I've also got the option of going back into the archives and pulling out all the best bits of my F40 and creating a Drive Every Ferrari episode around that. So let me know in the comments what you think, whether you'd prefer one or the other, and at last we'll get the F40 back on the channel. And now it's time to hand you over to Jason, who's gonna take you through his garage, some of the big movers and shakers going on there. Thanks Damien, and over to me for my garage update now this is going to be short and sweet you're going to set see some pictures of the cars i haven't done any walk arounds or anything like that because mostly the cars are tucked away in a very old very dusty very filthy farmer's barn and they're all kind of tucked in very very close but doesn't mean you won't get to see them because you'll do videos on all of them coming up soon so just to recap here's what's happened over the last six months First out of the gate, we've got a new Volvo. That's right, the XC90 went back. We've got a new version. Yes, I know, I bought another XC90. This is the hybrid, the new hybrid. It is absolutely gorgeous. It's got 22 inch alloys. It looks proper gangster. It does 40 miles on electric only, which means it's absolutely peaceful and quiet and just a wonderful wafty car. Still got the same seven seats inside, so perfect for me. When I ordered it back in, I think it probably October of last year, 
We had no Range Rover, we had no Land Rover Defender 7 seater, so this was the only car that was actually going to fit people in. Obviously, we now have those, so maybe next time we'll go and look at those again. Moving on to the MG, you may have seen it in a short. The MG went across to our friends over at Resto Respray, who are down in Rochford in Essex. I was thinking about putting a V8 in it, you see, but then I thought, well, let's just try and get the thing running for the summer so we can just enjoy it and have some fun in it. So those guys did an absolutely spot on amazing job. They completely renew all of the liquids and the fluids in it. They got it running absolutely perfectly. That is a proper fun little car. I also have a green MG Sebring that is in a right state. I'm not sure whether it's going to do anything. I think that's probably a project too far. I'm in two minds whether it's doing anything with it. It has got a V8 engine in it. It has been converted to 1978 mgb gt i don't know what i'm going to do with that car at the moment so watch this space obviously we've got the bedford bambi uh damien thinks it'd be a really good idea if we review that car well car motorhome um snail on wheels i'm not sure what you want to call it i'm not convinced that you guys will actually care about whether that's there or not so let me know leave some comments in the bottom if enough people will say jason bambi 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 We'll get the thing out and we'll get it MOT'd. Me and Damon will go out and have some weekend fun. No, it's not Brokeback Mountain. No, no, no. The old Fiat 500, the little tiny white car, unfortunately didn't go out at all last year. Uh, we need an electric fuel pump in it because um, obviously fuel evaporates from carburetors after a while and the, and the mechanical fuel pump isn't really man enough to get all of the fuel up there straight away after it's been sitting for a while so that's a little job that needs to be done the clutch pedal is a little bit of pain as well i think the cable's dragging somewhere and now to the Talbot. i mean what an amazing car i know you still keep crying out for a proper review i guarantee you that review will come in the next month i'm telling you damien and i are going to be out in that Talbot, and we are going to be having the time of our lives it's had a gearbox change oil change on the gearbox it's had uh, oil change on the differential it's had an engine oil change it is running so very sweet at the moment a uh, couple of little problems with it that we still need to fix which is a uh, strong smell of petrol that could just be the tank's not baffled so i'm looking into getting uh, an aluminium racing tank to stop all of that get it nicely baffled but other than that that car is absolutely spot on the Celica, which one i hear you ask uh so the red Celica that i've got that's just sitting in uh, a friend's lockup I'm not doing anything with that at the moment. It's a, as you know, it's a GT4, so it's a proper car. Um, the idea was to strip it completely, paint the thing white, put a cage in it, and then soup the engine up and have ourselves a proper Carlos signed Didier Oriol Castro um, Celica. I then went and bought a white one that already had the Castro stickers on it. So the red one kind of got sidelined. So the white car, which is a wide body GT4, that is currently at a place called Warner Lewis, and he's over in Worcester. So he's the guy that did Nicky Grist's original um, Celica. He is absolutely amazing uh, what he does to these cars. It's being turned into a proper real rally car. I can't wait for it to be finished. Not sure when that's going to happen. Probably no sooner than the next six to eight months because there's a lot of work that's going into that car. Obviously, we've still got the Yaris. That's coming up to two years old now. I've only done about 4,000 miles in that car. Um, I'm still not sure if I want to keep it or not. I know I should keep it uh, because of what a fantastic car it is. But it doesn't really have a place at the moment and I'm running out of room because I keep buying things. And when I say buying things, that brings me neatly onto the Jaguar. It was one of those Nexa Tills impulse purchase. Uh, bought it at historic auctions. Jaguar E-Type V12. Didn't want a Mark I. I didn't want a Mark II. I wanted the Mark III because that one had the V12 in it. And that engine is so silky smooth. So that went down to JD Classics to be fully checked over. And they've still got a bit of work to do on it. We need a new distributor in there to make it run even better. Make it start perfectly. And that car you will see on this channel very very soon uh, the only other thing to say is i am currently sat in a fiat 500 electric that's right it's not my car it's my other half's car but we decided to go for a fiat 500 electric because it is just perfect for all of the little round town things as i've said before i think that's the perfect place for a proper ev round town pottering around and this is a convertible car it's the only electric convertible car you can buy and 
we absolutely love it. It's so quiet, it's so quirky. Uh, it is unfortunately in rose gold, which wasn't my choice, but then it's not actually my car to drive around in. You may or may not get to see this on the channel because I might review it, but I don't think Damien's gonna be that interested. And that's kind of it really, that sums it up. I've got nothing on the horizon, although I do have a hankering for a GT40 replica. Oh yes, oh yes I do. Thank you for watching this episode on The Car Guys. I hope you enjoyed this garage update and an update on Drive Every Ferrari and also a look at Jason's cars. Hope you found it interesting. If you like what we're doing on the channel, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode next week. He's still there? Okay, now it's just you and me. I can tell you exclusively that in fact there is another car coming to The Car Guys garage and it's a brand new Ferrari. That's as much as I'm gonna tell you at the moment. There'll be a reveal soon and obviously a specking video, but there is a new Ferrari coming to this channel. Shh, see you next week.